Hello, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle with a continuation in my series of brief screencast tutorials on VAR mapping. And primarily for my FRM candidate customers, I'd like to focus or drill down on matrix notation that we often see when when we are dealing with the uh, VAR mapping and, and in particular delta normal VAR, and that is the calculation of portfolio variance and volatility. And so to use an example, I'm following Jorin here. Our portfolio will consist of positions in two currencies. Here, a $200 million US position in Canadian dollars. And then also a $100 million position in euros. And also I have an assumption about the volatility of each currency. So we'll assume the Canadian dollar has 5% volatility and the euro has 12% volatility. Our total portfolio again is the sum of the two positions. We have 300 million US dollars. 200 of it invested in a Canadian, in a foreign currency, the Canadian dollar. The other 100 million invested in euros. Right now I have a correlation of zero. And the focus of the screencast that I wanted to review is in particular this element here inside the square root that you see often in the delta normal VAR, and that is portfolio variance. Starting from left to right here, we have, this is value at risk of the portfolio. The value at risk or VAR of the portfolio is equal to alpha here, which is, I call it the critical value, you could call it the standard normal deviate. That's the number, remember, that's going to scale based on our confidence. L more confidence is a larger critical Z value or standard normal deviate. This here, sigma P, is the volatility or standard deviation of the portfolio. So a portfolio is just like an asset in this respect, at least under this delta normal parametric VAR. And that is to say, we're just taking volatility and multiplying by it, really. So we've got a multiplier by the portfolio volatility here by the initial position of the portfolio, W for wealth. The This can be re-expressed here in the kind of notation that uh, we oftentimes see. And again, this is the point of the screencast. And that is to, we still got the uh, multiplier here to scale by confidence. But then what we have here is dollar volatility of the portfolio. So that means what's inside the square root is the dollar variance of the portfolio, right? If we take the square root of the variance, we get the volatility. And this is in dollar form now as opposed to the percentage form here. So here's what we end up using oftentimes in the delta normal uh, parametric value at risk. So I'm going to move this up to de-emphasize it because that's the that's the formula for VAR. And what I really want to focus on is what's right here because at least I know my, several of my FRM candidate customers are rusty or new to matrix math. And this can be, if you're not familiar, the confusing part of all this. That part inside again, the square root, and this is the dollar variance of the portfolio. X is just the vector that holds the positions. X shows up twice. Here is X as a column vector. Here is X transposed into a row vector. In the middle, we have the variance covariance matrix. So this is really the key player in all of this. And when we look at this value risk formula for portfolio value risk, really the big driver is the covariance variance matrix. Now here it is over here for our example. I've only got two assets, so it's a two by two matrix. If the portfolio has 10 assets, it's gonna be 10 by 10. And what I have in this cell here is the variance of the Canadian dollar, you can see the row here, with itself. I'm sorry, the covariance of the Canadian dollar with itself. The covariance of a thing with itself is its variance. So what we have here is the volatility squared. So in a covariance matrix, I like to remind, the diagonal always contains variances. Now, what do we put in this cell? This is the covariance between the Canadian dollar and the euro. Well, if you're an FRM candidate customer, I hope you, this is at least familiar, 
the covariance between x and y is the correlation between x and y multiplied by the volatilities. So right here, I can, I can do this math directly here. I can take for the covariance between Canadian dollar and euro, I can take the correlation between the two and multiply it by the volatility of the Canadian dollar multiplied by the volatility of the euro and I get zero because I have no correlation so I'm going to change my correlation assumption to 20 percent and with a correlation of 20 percent then I have my covariance between the Canadian dollar and the euro this cell here is the same value because it's just the it's just reversed the covariance between the euro and the Canadian dollar ha the covariance does have an associative property so we have the same value there but what I end up with here is the variance covariance matrix that corresponds to the sigma here and so this is really the key element in a lot of this uh, parametric uh, or delta normal based value at risk We can see we've got the variance of the Canadian dollar the variance of the euro and then the covariance between the two. So now we can go and implement again the portfolio variance in dollar terms. And I'm gonna go right to left because on the right here I've got X. What is X? It's just a vector of my positions. Here it is. Remember I have $200 in Canadian dollars and $100 in euros. So here I have a column vector with my positions. And then on in the middle we've got the variance covariance matrix I already did that here it is two by two and then on the left again we have the vector of positions but the uh, apostrophe indicates transposed and so here it is the column vector has been transposed into a row vector so now we've got uh, positions transposed the sigma for the variance covariance matrix and then the uh, positions in the column vector. I'll move this out and now I can perform the matrix multiplication and the product of these three matrix elements is going to be my portfolio variance in dollar terms. So what I do first here is I post multiply. That is I take the sigma the covariance of matrix and multiply by the uh, column vector of positions. That's right here. I'll take the old one out so I can show you MMULT is the Excel function for matrix math and I'm going to literally select the variance covariance matrix comma see how I'm right here and then my positions that's my X right here close parens and then hit control shift enter to indicate I'm doing a matrix now what I've produced here in this column vector is the product of these two so then I only need to multiply X transposed that's right here by this product which is right here I'll take that out so I can show you M M U L T I multiply the transposed position vector by the product that we already did the product of these two close parens and I get 292 million so that is the portfolio variance in dollar terms. If I come over here to the portfolio variance in dollar terms, well, what do we know about the variance? We know if we take the square root, we're going to get, whoops, if we take the square root, we're going to get the portfolio volatility in dollar terms. And then all we need to do is scale that based on our confidence. So if I come down here to value risk for the portfolio, I only need to multiply the volatility of the portfolio by, in this case, I'll use 1.645, which tracks with a 95% confidence. And that tells me the 95% confident VAR for this portfolio is 28 million because 17 million was the portfolio volatility in dollar terms which is the square root of 292 million which is the portfolio variance in dollar terms which was the product here of a transposed vector of positions 200 and 100 the variance covariance matrix and the vector of positions so that right there so I hope this was helpful to understand this matrix notation that you'll often see in delta normal var. This is David Harper, the Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.